Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. What's going on, everyone, and welcome to this episode, episode 332 of the Auto Detailing Podcast. Today is a ginormous day, um, and I'll tell you why. On the JimboDaily.com website, today launches, I'm launching 22 more items. So we already have a ton of accessories on there, but what I decided to add was more of my favorite uh, microfiber towels. There's a ton of microfiber towels on there. There's a new microfiber wash mitt. There's a wheel woolly. There's a drill attachment for a carpet scrubber. There's a ton, a ton of cool, really cool products that I'm excited to have on there. Um, and so it's it's slowly, like I've said from the beginning, I want it to be an ever evolving place where I add constantly. I'm adding um, items. So. Uh, black latex gloves, um, and not only are they just black latex glove, they're they're textured on the outside, which is cool. Those are on the site. Um, I can't even think of all the stuff on there. So um, I would really, really appreciate you guys heading over to JimboDaily.com and checking out all the goodies that I added on there. Again, went to the uh, photo studio, had some photos done up um, to make it more of my style and my feel and and kind of the way I want to see things. Um, but there's a ton of good stuff on there, uh, all really great, greatly priced, which is a whole another conversation. Anyway, so JimboDaily.com, ton of towels, black latex gloves, ton of accessories. Um, and for the first 10 orders I get, uh, you're going to get a free grit guard. Free grit guard. Uh, so first 10 orders, gonna I'm going to throw in a free grit guard. Um, to all those orders. Um, so yeah, so first 10 people that decide to put in an order, um, let's make it over 50 bucks. So the first 10 orders over 50 bucks, eh, forget it. The first orders, the first 10 orders are going to get a free grit guard. No, uh, price, no price. Uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so today's episode in lieu of that, in lieu of Jimbo's daily, uh, uh, launching more products. I thought it would be a great time to play this episode. And now this episode is actually taken from, it's a recording from one of the lessons in one of the training modules in the whole Detailer Inner Circle um, program. So within the Detailer Inner Circle program, we have multiple training uh, courses along with the whole slew of other stuff that you could see at DetailerInnerCircle.com. Um, and, and within the Detailer Inner Circle, one of the training modules that I created, uh, it's called How to Start and Grow a Profitable Detailing Business. And one of those modules within there, so this is like one thing and one other thing and a very, 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 very small part um, of the detailer inner circle. But what it talks about and what I talk about is what equipment do you need to buy? So I thought, you know what, I'm launching 22 new items at, on jimbodaily.com. I think it's a good time to, to talk about equipment, what equipment you need um, and what equipment you don't need. And then I'm going to follow up on this Wednesday um, is actually going to be an episode from someone in the detailer inner circle in a little chat program we have called Voxer. Um, in the Voxer chat, um, a, a gentleman just dropped a huge knowledge bomb about equipment. So um, I'm going to play that on Wednesday as a daily detail tip. But today's episode is going to be just a lesson from uh, how to start and grow a profitable detailing business, which is free if you join the Detailer Inner Circle along with a lot of the other stuff that you can get DetailerInnerCircle.com. Uh, guys are loving that, getting great feedback. Just spent, uh, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes on the phone with someone who, who joined this past weekend, um, which was cool. So JimboDaily.com, I encourage you to check out the towels I have up there, the new items I have up there, wash mitt, and like I said, the first 10 orders will get a grit guard. Um, so that'll be fun. Wheel Wooly, what else? Hats are still up. All the old items all the old items, all the past items are still up. I just continue to add on there. So hope you guys enjoy this episode of the auto detailing podcast in regards to what equipment do you need to buy? Now I didn't change any of the audio, so it's going to, it's going, it's going to sound like it's part of a course and the, the audio is going to be a little bit crisper because it's part of a video course. Um, but anyway, here we go. 
Welcome to lesson number six of how to start and grow a detailing business. Now, in order to be profitable and to actually have a business, you're going to have to have some equipment, right? So let's get right into, of course, another quote. Quotes are my favorite. And as we talked about in a previous lesson, you are going to want to continue your education. And quotes are really fun way to continue your education. So Steve Martin said this one said, first, a doctor told me the good news. I was going to have a disease named after me. Now, what the heck does that kind of quote have to do with detailing and then detailing equipment? Well, buying equipment can become a disease. I mean, let's face it. You don't need that much equipment to start making money as a detailing business. And that is the blessing and the curse of this business, but also your advantage, especially is especially if you're... Uh, cash flow strapped. So, um, it, but it does quickly become a disease, and, and you kind of feel like you have to have all the latest and greatest equipment to uh, uh, really be a profitable detailer, to be a quote unquote professional detailer, to co- be a quote unquote expert detailer. Um, so, it, it our OCD takes over which OCD would be a disease, I guess, or a condition, whatever. Um, And it becomes a disease. So to go back, uh, the good news is, is that you're going to have a disease named after you. I'm not sure. I think that quote's a little far-fetched. Anywho, uh, this is also the section uh, where you can completely blow your budget. So obviously, budget's important to most people. Um, and if you blow your budget, you will continually put yourself in a cash flow crunch if you're not smart. And again, that $400 polisher or, you know, the, that polisher could be in quotes because insert any equipment here, steamer, extractor, new compound, whatever. Uh, it's great. But if you don't have last, if you have last year's model that works fine and you're having trouble paying your rent, you probably shouldn't spend the money on something that you already have. There will be tools that cost $400 that will end up saving you time, labor, energy, or all the above. Um, But assess each big purchase and then make your decision to buy or not to buy. And as we talked about in the previous lesson, which was fixed or mobile location, um, and again, as these uh, in conjunction with that uh, previous lesson, in conjunction with all these lessons building upon each other, excuse me, all these lessons building upon each other, uh, the benefit to that is that these decisions become easier and easier to make as you work through these modules, these lessons, whatever you want to call them. Um, It becomes easier to make these, these decisions based on the decisions that you've made in the past. Okay, so you have your Evernote all opened. You've made a full list of the uh, uh, your expenses that you're going to have. And part of those <clears throat> startup expenses are uh, your equipment goals. So I call these the equipment goals. And it's great to have the equipment that you need to have and then the equipment that you want to have. So let's get into it. Uh, by the way, going back to this one, you may be able to have enough cash flow to buy a brand new polisher every month. I'm not saying that a $400 polisher is a bad thing. It's just if you don't need it, don't get it. So <clears throat> pro tip, product manufacturers are businesses and some have marketing geniuses behind them whose sole job is to separate you from your hard earned money. Okay. So product companies their purpose, their business model is to sell more product. Fair, right? And then they hire marketing geniuses. Hopefully I'm slowly becoming one of those. Um, that will, their sole job is to make it seem like you need this year's model, even though you have last year's model tool that works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with this model. I just want it, <clears throat> you to be aware of this model. So, uh, don't think that having this year's model extractor is going to make you a better detailer than you were last year, because honestly, you're probably a better detailer this year than you were last year because you're continuing your education in the latest uh, techniques. So, and you could follow along my YouTube channel um, and I will continue to show you latest and greatest techniques. 
But there's also a handful of detailers out there putting out quality content that you should always be following as well. Uh, Here's the tip. I always try to buy my products local. So I have a local distributor that uh, their branding isn't great. Their marketing sucks, but their products are great. And for that reason, their products are really, really affordable. So again, running a profitable business uh, has to do with watching how much you're spending. But when I can't find a product locally, I utilize Amazon.com. Guys, free shipping and ultra cheap shipping when I need stuff same day or next day is significantly better than some of these bigger uh, detail online retailers that are selling detailing equipment. For example, I wanted to get a bottle of this specific product. I don't remember what product it was. I was going to get it shipped across the country. It was going to cost me 30 bucks and take a week and a half. Okay, that to me is unacceptable. Okay, so I went on Amazon.com. They didn't have the product either. So then I started searching it locally. I found the product that was similar locally and got it shipped out to me within two days for $7. That is significant. But eventually, I think all the product is going to be on Amazon. And so we can utilize that to our full advantage. Um, A current list of all the products that I've personally tried and use and love um, so essentially your, the essentials, um, and maybe some equipment goals can be fi- found at autodetailingpodcast.com slash resources. Um, I really want you guys to use that resource, uh, that page as a resource, um, to quality products that I've actually used and tested, but let's get into, uh, the nitty gritty, of the, essentials. So the essential equipment that you will need to run and grow your profitable detailing business, a high speed polisher. This is something that you really don't need off the bat. But if you're going to be getting into stuff like scratch removal, like spot scratch removal, you're going to be sanding a lot. Um, You're going to want a high speed polisher relatively quickly. I didn't start out with a high speed polisher. I didn't have any buffers when I got started, not until the first six months did I actually have any machines. So it can be done. Um, So uh, the story about high-speed buffing, uh, DAs are are becoming like the norm and are the norm. But one mistake that I'm noticing is that guys are taking way longer to do stuff because they're afraid to use a high-speed buffer. Um, so they only want to use a DA, but it stuff is taking them like triple the amount of time to do it. So whereas they should just hit hit the, the paint with like uh, a rotary and then a DA, they're using a DA all the time and it's taking forever. I saw this at SEMA. This guy was polishing out a panel and it was just taking him forever because he was only using a DA. And I remember sitting there thinking, man, if you would just step up and use a rotary first with a wool pad and then switch to your DA, you'd be like under half the amount of time that you spent. Um, Dual action polisher, most common, hottest thing since sliced bread and detailing. You're probably going to have one of these, want to have one of these right off the bat. A steamer. Ever since I got my VX5000, which is a steamer, it's completely changed the way I do interiors. And I would highly, 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 highly suggest starting with a steamer. You can find one for under 200 bucks. You don't need to spend a thousand on the VX5000, but it really helps with all the nooks and crannies. Um, again, has completely changed the way I do interiors. This may even be more important than starting with a polisher. Honestly, even more important. Um, and again, you can get a decent one for under 200 bucks if you go to autodetailingpodcast.com slash resources. I got one on there. I think it's under 200 bucks depending on when you're watching this recording. Um, another important or more of the essentials, you're going to have to have a vacuum. Shop vac is a very inexpensive one. And you can find all the links to this stuff at autodetailingpodcast.com slash resources. Um, so... You're not going to be able to click these links here, obviously, in this recording, but just know that if you go over to autodetailingpodcast.com slash resources, that all these items will be there with direct links to purchase them. Um, and those are affiliate links. They're going to all redirect you to Amazon. So I get a small commish off each one of those links. So I appreciate that. 
um, shop vac, you're looking about a hundred bucks. Easy. Uh, a clay towel. I prefer the clay towel and the clay disc. And I have a whole video over on my YouTube channel about why. So that'll be completely free to you. You can just go to youtube.com slash J Balaam. Um, and you will see, um, my super popular video on the difference between a clay towel uh, and a clay bar. Um, so I encourage you to check that out. APC would be an all purpose cleaner. Um, a good leather conditioner, um, a good carpet cleaner would be another essential, but you could also use your APC as the carpet cleaner. Magic erasers. I know those are taboo to a lot of people, um, but uh, they come in handy a lot of times for the interior and exterior of the car. So I use them a lot on door panels, plastic door panels. Uh, they work really well. You can use them on leather seats, but you want to be extremely careful. And I, off the record, I don't recommend you do them on leather seats, but it can be effective. Um, brushes, I spelled that wrong right there. Uh, brushes, you're going to need a multitude of brushes. Dressings, interior dressings, exterior dressings. Again, a full list can be found at autodetailingpodcast.com slash resources. Obviously, number one on your list should be microfiber towels. You're going to need a lot of them and all the time. Um, this pet stone or the plastic dog hair removal brush is amazing. And you're definitely going to want one of those, um, in your arsenal, uh, for those situations that you come across heavy dog hair, um, a compound and a polish. Um, you're going to want one of each. There's popular ones like Meguiar's 105, 205, um, those would be two separate, one compound, one polish. I prefer Meguiar's M100. Um, and one that I'm completely in love with right now um, is Scholl's Concepts. Their S20 um, is their all-in-one. Ugh, it has made me a better detailer. It really has. You can get... So the, the goal of mine is that is to reduce my detailing business down to as few chemicals as possible that I travel with me. So as few products as I can have in my rig, the better. Because it just eliminates the hassle. So I was using traditional compounds and polishes, but they were becoming less consistent for me and it was really driving me nuts. So I decided that I was going to go on a search for one compound that I can use different pads with, different machines with, but I would get a more consistent result time and time again. So I've been on the Scholl's kick. I would highly suggest it to you. Also, HD speed. So honestly, between Scholl's and HD speed, you're going to have everything you need in a compound and a polish. Um sealants, spray waxes, and inspection lights. I have multiple, multiple podcast episodes and YouTube videos on all of these sealants, spray waxes, and inspection lights um, that I'm sure if you're watching this course or buying this lesson, you've, you've seen those episodes. Um, what you can do is just research either one of these sealant, spray wax, or inspection light on autodetailingpodcast.com. Um, and it'll, I go way more in depth. I have probably a few hours of content on each one of these subjects. So there's no need for me to really go in depth on this one, but you definitely want to have sealant spray waxes and polished compounds, all these stuff listed. This is your essential list. Um, uh, car wash shampoo or a rinseless wash, um, Guys, eco-friendly detailing is really becoming a thing. And thanks to the government and state and federal regulations um, that's forced us to to utilize these methods. And thanks to product companies that have gotten better with technology, you can actually be more efficient with a rinseless or an eco-friendly method of detailing um, than you can with traditional methods. So... With that being said, I would encourage everyone to look at more eco-friendly detailing methods. Even if you're not into being eco-friendly, it can make you more efficient. Um, an adhesive remover you is going to be a must-have. I can't tell you how many times the customers ask me to you know, remove sticker residue off the front dash or whatever. 
uh, masking tape. There's going to be a lot of times that you want to mask off emblems or badges or plastic parts of the car. Um, <clears throat> you're going to want to do that. Uh, wool pads and foam pads for paint correction, scratch removal, um, all that. A bucket system. So you're probably going to want to have a bucket, obviously, for your wash media or whatever, your rinseless wash, a bucket to have your stuff in. And you're probably also going to want to have a pad washer bucket system uh, for when you're buffing out a car. Uh, extension cords. I recommend probably at least 100 feet in extension cords. Um, an ozone machine. <clears throat> Good for removing odors. I get a lot of questions about this, especially if you're going to help dealers, auction cars, body shops, mechanics, municipalities. Um, this tool alone can open you up to new possibilities within detailing, and it can really be a catalyst to get you into a new client. So, because this is a trick that I would say 80% of detailers don't even know about, that you can remove smoke odor, th uh, barf smell, um, and it's kind of these fringe services that you can really offer that are actually really profitable. So, um, uh, an ozone machine, I can't tell you, they're, they're about 300 bucks, but I charge 75 to a hundred per job. So they, they don't come around often, but if you get that call for, um, say, uh, you know, mechanic has a person that brought their car in that, um, uh, someone barfed in last night, boom, that's an easy 150, 200 bucks for you. Um, and that's not including cleaning up chunks. Um, or, uh, let's see a, someone, one, uh, one thing that I've been seeing floating around Facebook, um, someone smoked weed in their boss's car while their boss was gone, which is a freaking horrible idea by the way. But guess how much that person is going to be willing to pay to have you remove that smoke odor in their boss's car before their boss comes back from vacation. A lot of money because their job's on the line and they made a big time mistake. So an ozone machine is, you know, I would maybe call it an essential. Here I have it, something to add on later, but hey. Um, an extractor's also something that you can add on later. I haven't used one in years because of my steam machine, um, but there's still a place for them in certain situations. Um, an air compressor may be something you want to add on later. Again, not a necessity. Um, and obviously, one thing I don't have listed, but a generator would be something that I would actually add to that list as well. So feel free to rewind and go back through this list. This is the list of the bare bones essentials that you're going to have to have to be a profitable detailing business. And remember, Sometimes it can turn into a disease, so just make sure and be vigilant that it doesn't become a, debil a debil debilitating disease and you don't become unprofitable because you're worried about getting the latest and greatest tools. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode, episode 332 of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'll catch you on Wednesday for another daily detail tip, um, and I appreciate all of you that have gone over to jimbodaily.com. And I appreciate you guys even more if you make a purchase. All right. And I'm going to throw in some goodies for you guys. So JimboDaily.com, big launch day, 22 products added to the site. Uh, and I finally feel like I'm getting to uh, a nice place with it and a nice groove. So mainly uh, the majority of the products added are microfiber towels. So if you're in the need for some microfiber towels, uh, please, please head on over to that. And if you do, I appreciate you. See ya.